Well, I've finally done it. After hours of research and deliberation, I have ranked all Roman emperors from Augustus all the way to Theodosius from worst to best. Yep, all 77 of them. All 77 of them. Why did I decide to do it? I don't know. I was probably bored and did it to kill some time. In retrospect, I can say there were so many terrible emperors, it's actually surprising the Roman Empire didn't collapse sooner than it did. Anyway, for this list, only the legitimate emperors count, which means no usurpers, and no Western or Eastern Roman emperors after the death of Theodosius I are on this list, and seceding emperors don't count either. Honorius and Focus, you escape my wrath. For now at least. Now let's get this going. Seventy-seven Elagabalus. I mean, yeah, hardly surprising we start with this one. He's like an amalgamate of Caligula and Nero, but somehow even more extreme than any of them. A puppet who didn't want to be a puppet, which is commendable, but he was a disaster of a ruler anyway, and it isn't surprising he didn't last long. Seventy-seven Caligula. You know, it's kind of a win for Caligula not to be dead last on this list, considering he's the first guy you think of when you try to picture a terrible Roman emperor in your mind. Well. Either him or Nero. But yeah, this guy brought the empire on the brink of bankruptcy in only four years, and this after the long reign of the notorious cheapskate Tiberius. Not to mention he was clearly mad. There's way too much stuff written about this guy not to make me think otherwise. 75 Commodus, the most aptly named emperor. Why rule an empire when you can play gladiator instead? Not that he was any better at ruling than fighting, considering he saw it as a purging exercise, which is what ended up getting him killed in the end. 74 Constantine II. Not the equal of his father, not the equal of his younger brother, not the equal of his grandfather, and not even the equal of his even younger effeminate brother. Left to growl at the fact that he got nothing from the massacre of the princes and not enough for being regent to his younger brother, he got himself involved in a civil war against said brother only to be ambushed and killed. 73 Caracalla, the dude who thought ruling was doing whatever he wanted, whether bankrupting cities out of his own extravagance or straight up massacring entire cities because he didn't like a joke or whatever. This guy was such a fine piece of work he killed his own brother in front of their mother. 72 Geta, Caracalla's younger brother. Apparently he was just like him and therefore just as terrible as both a person and a ruler. He comes out as the better one just because he didn't live as long, so... Yay? 71 Tribonianus Gallus. Here's a useful tip when you're the Roman Emperor during the crisis of the 3rd century. Don't be completely useless. Actually respond to barbarian invasions. And please mind the debasement of the currency. Do anything. At all. Anything. Please. Just don't be a useless neat. 70 Didius Julianus. What a great idea it is to buy the imperial throne at an auction the Praetorian Guard took in a desperate greedy attempt to avoid a civil war. After all, it's such a good idea to get yourself involved in what will obviously become a power struggle and siding with the weakest possible faction. Valentin II. Look, it's the first straight up child puppet emperor. There really isn't much more to say about it. Next, 68 Gratian, another child puppet emperor. He was slightly more useful than Valentin II, with slightly being emphasized. 67 Volusianus. Apparently he was going to be the successor to Tribonianus Gallus, but he never really got his sole rule considering he got the post. Which isn't surprising, this is the crisis of the 3rd century after all. 66 Quintilius. This guy was emperor for 17 days. Next, 65 Emilian. The dude who deposed Tribonianus. But then Valerian came all the way from Gaul and his own troops murdered him. 64 and 63 Pupienus and Balbinus. The two emperors installed by the Senate against Trax. One took care of Rome while the other one gathered an army, I don't remember which is which to be honest. They were both shit, didn't trust each other and both ended up getting killed. 62. Dia Dominion. Might not know about this guy. He was made emperor by Macrinus, but like his father he was so terrible he lost a civil war to the worst guy on this list. 61. Martinian. Some dude like Kini is made emperor during the civil war against Constantine. Not like he ever mattered. 60. Valerius Valens. Same as the last guy. Apparently this guy was a bit more useful considering he was a general and all. 59. Eugenius. But but emperor by the time the empire was pretty much falling apart. Next. 58. Victor. Literally who? Seriously, I don't remember this guy at all. I don't even know what he did. Nor why I decided to put him in this exact placement. 57. Guardian III. Another child puppet emperor who was never really in control of the empire. I keep waiting for an emperor I could speak more about, but the ones right now are just straight up forgettable. 56. Philip II. Named co-emperor by his father. Did nothing of substance. Got killed by the Praetorian Guard. 55. Carinus. Remembered as the dude Diocletian usurped. 
Apparently he was betrayed for being a little too thirsty. In other words, fond of other men's wives. Though to be fair, that's probably hearsay. 54 Florianus. Yet another emperor from the cries of the 3rd century who got murdered by his own troops. What a shock. 53. Vitellius. You know, when the legacy you leave behind is that of being nothing but a fat bastard, you knew you were never a good emperor in the first place. 52. Macrinus. Don't try to claim power when the family usurp isn't dead yet. Odds are they'll take advantage of you at a moment of weakness. It's just basic, sensible Roman politics. 51. Saloninus. One of Gallienus' sons. Got murdered. What a shock. 50. Jovian. The second funniest death of all Roman emperors. Besides that, he was seen as a bit of a joke. It's not good when you start your reign having to admit defeat in a war, and in his case, he probably wouldn't have lasted very long anyway. 49 Magnus Maximus. The best, the greatest, who wasn't either. Just another general taking advantage of a moment of weakness to seize power by himself. One of the better emperors on this list ended up putting him in his place. 48 Nero. It's probably a bit surprising to see Nero so far up on this list, but reality is the only reason he's seen as terrible is because the Christians hated him and they wrote many of the history books. Nero isn't actually a terrible emperor. Granted, he wasn't good either, he was just mediocre. 47 Otho. You know, I respect this guy a little more than your average emperor. I mean, sure, he usurped power for himself, but when a civil war came, this dude had the decency to kill himself, rather than just wasting more lives. Mad props, dude. You managed not to be completely shitty. 46 Severus. There really isn't much to say about this guy. He was made emperor by Diocletian and Galerius, got usurped, tried to get his position back, failed and died. 45 Pertinax. Always pay your troops. Don't try to con them out. They'll probably kill you and, God forbid, they might even try to sell the position you formerly had at an auction to the public. 44 Gordian I. What a great idea to rebel against the established power with nothing but a militia you can't even command. 43 Gordian II. What a great idea to rebel against the established power with nothing but a militia you can command, only to put him up against actual trained soldiers. 42 Maximian. Alright, let's face it, this guy without Diocletian holding his hand was a bit of a disaster. In great part, he contributed towards Britney seceding and then when he tried to get it back, he botched his invasion. Then there's his policies and his attempts to get back at power, all of which failed spectacularly and ended up getting him killed. 41 Uranius Etruscus. Another one of Gallienus' sons. Take a guess what happened to him. No prizes though. 40. Maximinus. Like Maximian, this guy was another one of the Tetrarchs. Specifically, the dude who was defeated by Licinius. To be fair, he was probably the most forgettable out of all of them, but not necessarily the worst. 39. Numerian. Another crisis of the 3rd century emperor who was maybe, possibly, probably, definitely assassinated. 38. Maximinus Trax. Crisis of the 3rd century emperor. No prizes to what happened to him. In a way, this guy being in the median position actually fits what you would expect from your average Roman Emperor. That is, a halfway decent general who ended up getting assassinated. 37. Hostilian. A crisis of the 3rd century Emperor who was not killed by his troops, or his own generals, or politicians, or even the Praetorian Guard. No, he was killed by the gods. 36. Decius. The father of the Emperor who was killed by the gods, who was also in turn killed by the gods. 35. Vetranio. You know, this guy knew his place. The only reason he made himself emperor was just to stop another usurper at the request of the imperial family, and then, when the time came for him to relinquish his power, he did. He didn't give in to powerless. I can respect that. 34 Lucius Virus. Think of a Nero that can actually put in some work and you pretty much get this guy. Yeah, he partied and was kind of a degenerate, but when it was time to put in the effort as an emperor, he did. Also, his older adoptive brother, one named Marcus Aurelius, probably kept him in his place. 33 Valerian, an unfortunate victim of circumstance, though not as much as his son. Imagine gathering an army to defend your empire only for it to be devastated by disease. 32 Philip the Arab, this guy was nothing remarkable, until he realized he was a Roman emperor for six years during the crisis of the third century. Six years! at a time where most emperors lasted from a few months to a couple of years. To a certain extent, that implies a degree of ability. 31 Galerius. At the end of the day, kind of a failure. He thought he had stacked the deck in his favor after putting his friends in power, but he still lost the game. He believed himself to be another Diocletian, but ended up being nothing like him. His success against the Persian kind of balances things out though. 30 Galba. The man everyone thought should be emperor until the moment he became one. Being overly strict is what ended up making him vulnerable, and not paying the bribes he never promised to begin with is what got him killed. 29 Maxentius. 
Everyone gives him shit, but this dude started out from a terrible position and still ended up doing a lot. With not much more than a few Praetorians and some raw recruits, he established control of Italy and parts of Africa, managed to beat not one, but two emperors in a defensive campaign, and managed to last six years while pretty much everyone was hostile to him. Then Constantine happened. 28 Tacitus, aka the last two the Senate put in power. For an obvious temporary placeholder, he did pretty well, all things considered. 27 Constance. Point 4. He did defeat his brother in a civil war, even if said brother in question was Constantine II. Point against. He was killed for being too gay. 26 Valence. This guy is given too much shit for his mistakes. Yes, he did lose the Battle of Adrianople. What a lot of people forget is that he was deciding things under faulty information. He was told there were only 10,000 gods, not 20,000. As for letting said gods in question in, this was done pretty frequently by the late Empire and the one who fucked up the procedure was a local official, not Valens in question. Because otherwise, Valens was a pretty solid dude. Scoring some victories against the gods, fighting the Persians, defeating usurpers, he was alright. He just criticized for mistakes that weren't entirely his. 25. Julian. Great tactical dude. Effective administrator. Stupid ass ideals. Christianity had some 40 odd years entrenching itself into the imperial fold. Did this guy think it was just gonna go away? Because he wanted to? Also, why did he choose to invade Persia without any specific goal in mind? He's loved by some new age hippies and all that, but for me, while he's clearly the superior to Constantine II and a bit better than Constance, I can think of quite a few of his family members who were clearly better emperors than he was. Besides, you want to read some decent imperial philosophical texts? Go read Marcus Aurelius. 24 Licinius. Yes, killing all those related to any emperor is not a nice thing to do, but ultimately, it is the practical thing to do if you want to hold on to power. The last of the Tetrarchs before Constantine did his thing. 23. Alexander Severus. A puppet emperor who was gradually becoming an actual emperor. He was prudent and thoughtful, and unfortunately for him, codependent and unassertive. He could have turned out into a good emperor, but his mother took too long to die. 22. Probus. Oh look, yet another crisis of the 3rd century emperor. No prizes again, I'm afraid. Probus does stand out for continuing the recovering phase and being a very capable general, however. 21. Nerva. The first of the five good emperors, but let's be real here. He wasn't a good emperor. He sent the empire into financial troubles and his rule was marked by the fact the army hated him. The only good thing he did was choosing Trajan as his successor and that's the only reason he's one of the five good emperors. It was a good pick for sure though. 20. Claudius Gothicus. Famous for defeating the gods. Or maybe it was Gallienus, sources disagree. Another general who usurped power during the crisis of the 3rd century. He wasn't assassinated though, he got sick instead. 29. Carus. Perhaps it's a bit surprising to see this guy so far up on this list, but he led a pretty good campaign against the Persians. Then he was struck by lightning. He was assassinated, he was definitely assassinated. 18. Septimius Severus. As we're finally reaching the proper emperor, Septimius Severus is one of the last stops before we finally get into the good ones. And yes, this guy was not a good emperor, considering he was the one who started debasing the currency like a madman in order to increase his soldiers' pay. On one hand, keeping himself in power was the reason why. On the other, a lot of the problems the empire faced later down the line, and possibly the reason it fell in the first place, can be chalked up to him. 17. Constantius I. Great general, got Britain back. He was a pretty alright emperor, but justifiably lives in the shadow of his much better son. 16. Constantius II. Almost into the good ones. Almost. And Constantius II just barely doesn't make it there. And the reason may surprise you. It's not because he massacred his family the first chance he could. In fact, I'd say that was a good decision, as it likely avoided several unneeded civil wars. No, the only reason I can say Constantius was a good emperor was because of the massive corruption that plagued the late empire, which started with his own administration. Otherwise, he proved himself to be pretty capable in the battlefield despite his poor experience and was much more tempered than contemporary sources paint him as. 15. Gallienus. I'm going to outright say that yes, this guy was a good emperor. He just happened to be caught up in a time where being good wasn't enough. Gallienus is pretty much the definition of Oh god, everything's burning, everything's on fire, and I'm just trying not to lose it. He shifted the army into focusing more on cavalry at a time where it was needed, and just look at the amount of shit he had to take. Disease rampant, endless barbarian invasions, entire provinces seceding, and god knows how many usurpers. Under these circumstances, it's a miracle he lasted 15 years in power. 14. Titus. Lasted too little. 
good dude, opened the Colosseum, did what he could with the devastation caused by Mount Vesuvius, brutally sacked Jerusalem, but then he dropped dead. 13. Theodosius I. The last emperor of a united Roman Empire. It was up to him to fix the mess caused by the Battle of Adrianople, and he didn't do too bad of a job. Really, his only major failing was not properly raising his own children, but in truth, looking at them, they might have been hopeless from the start. 12. Antoninus Pius. To be fair, this guy played the game on easy mode. Trajan and Hadrian left him a very solid empire, so he had his work easy to begin with. All he had to do was not fucking up. And, well, he didn't fuck up. 11. Valentin in the first. The angriest man that has ever lived. Like seriously, this dude had major anger issues. He once beat up a pagan priest for trying to bless him because he was a Christian. And that's not even mentioning how he died, which is the most hilarious death out of all Roman emperors. His death was a major setback for the empire though. He was a strong ruler against barbarian invasions, and him dying left the western throne to weak puppets. 10. Tiberius. For all the shit he's given, Tiberius was a proper emperor. The brutality of the treason trials during his reign is massively overblown, and in truth, not a lot of people died. He's also given shit for being a cheapskate, but really that was just a sign of a really efficient administration that didn't spend much. I mean, when Anastasius does it, he's praised, but when Tiberius does it, he's given shit for it. It's unfair, man. 9. Claudius. Set up effective bureaucracy, conquered Britain, had stuff built, an overall really solid dude. His choice for succession was shit, but then again, so was Tiberius. 8. Diocletian. The dude who tried to fix all the issues of the empire, and to be honest, kind of failed. His only major success was restructuring the defense. Everywhere else, his policies were pretty ineffective. The Tetrarchy seemed like a good idea on paper, but it collapsed as soon as he was gone. And let's not even mention his attempts at reviving the Roman economy. Still, he brought the empire some semblance of stability after a long time of not being stable at all. 7. Aurelian. Remember what I said about Calienus? About the endless barbarian invasions, provinces seceding, and whatnot? Well, Aurelian said, hold my beer, I got this, and he did. Crushed the Goths, the Germans, the newly created Palmyrene Empire, as well as the Gallic Empire, and restored the Roman Empire. Well, except Dacia, he straight up abandoned that. He's arrested to Tor Orbis, the restorer of the world, and had he ruled longer than five years, let's face it, he'd probably be number one. Alas, the devs thought he was too OP and had to have him killed before he could break the game. 6. Marcus Aurelius. He was kind of unprepared for what happened in his reign, but still did pretty well, all things considered. With a plague, a Persian invasion, and a barbarian invasion, Marcus Aurelius' job wasn't so much bringing the empire to new heights, but more so to keep it together and healthy. And to be fair, he did just that. A shame his son was a piece of shit. 5. Domitian. For anyone questioning the place of Domitian in the top 5, above Marcus Aurelius, there's a very simple reason why he's here. He's the only emperor to have actually fixed the problem of inflation. The only one out of all 77. That's cred no one else can have. But there's more than that. Despite the military hiccups, he still made the Empire's defenses stronger with the creation of the Limes Germanicus, and his administration was top-notch. Who cares if he pissed off a bunch of senators? For Hadrian, in my mind, the quintessential Roman Emperor. Upgraded the Empire's defenses, changes the focus into defensive, kept the legions drilling non-stop, built stuff wherever he went, and was far-sighted enough to see the Empire had to rely on the provincials and had to discard the Italian exceptionalism. Also, his plans for succession were probably the most well thought out out of all the emperors. 3. Constantine I. The not anymore guy. The emperor's bodyguards are disloyal? <laughs> not anymore. There's a terrible civil war? Not anymore. The capital's location is a strategic liability? Not anymore. Constantine's a badass, and his policies gave the Empire an extra century of life it probably didn't deserve. 2. Trajan. Fixer of a financial trouble with the tried and tested policy of seizing your enemy's minds. A great general. An administrator that could give autonomy to his subordinates. A chill dude who disarmed even those who opposed his ascension. And he was Rome at its largest extent. Not much more needs to be said. 1. Augustus. Obvious number one choice. This guy reshaped how Rome was governed in its very essence. He's also pretty much the model on how the following emperors would style themselves all the way up to Diocletian. His conquests pretty much defined the borders of the empire, which also brings me to the fact his reign is actually the one that saw the greatest amount of expansion too. And that's the list. I'm still recording this, this is gonna be a pain to edit.